Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome, welcome. There are a few seats in the front. If you guys want to sit, you can sit here. There is one seat there. But thank you very much for being here. It's so awesome to see. It's full. And some guys are back in there. So welcome to our talk, Simulating Trees with Geometry Notes. And we are from Blendercade. Me, Aman, is villain. So, Philip. Yeah, let me introduce myself. My name is Willem, and uh, uh, besides founding Blender Kit, I did uh, quite a lot of work with Blender for about 20 years. Uh, I cannot resist, and I want to ask a small question now. If you could raise your hands, how many of you do know what Blender Kit is? Uh, yeah, thank you. And how many of you do use Blender Kit? Uh, <laughs> uh, and are there any subscribers, maybe? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and how many are the creators? Yes. Nice. Uh, also nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So uh, now I will let uh, Aman uh, to introduce into what we do, what we present here. Um, in the program, it's promise it's live. It's partially live tutorial, partially talk. So I hope you will uh, tolerate that from us. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys remind me, remember me from yesterday's lightning talk, where nobody knew who I was. <laughs> so I was saving it for today. So I'm Amrit Bajwa, and I'm a game environment artist and a, a validator in Blender Kit. I review all the models, mostly reject them. If you are Sad, no worries. I give proper feedback also. So yeah, so uh, I gave last year a talk on how to become an environment artist in games. So do check it out. I, I laid out my Blender journey, how I became an uh, environment artist in AAA games. So I'm working with trees and in games from past eight years and working with the trees uh, in the games also. I worked on many big games like Forza Horizon 4, Walking Dead, and the recent GTA 6. I worked with uh, Rockstar Games, Playground, 2K Games, and many other studios, and remotely in office and place. So, me and Willem were talking about this a long time. Uh, okay, we should try something, right? And so we came together and we thought, let's build something together. And his crazy idea was to do it using geometry nodes. So we started simulating trees, right? So he actually did it. So it's not me, it's all his brain, but I don't know how he did it, but he did it. So the, the long story short, how he went to do it, uh, I, I remember he had this vacation in India, like last year, he went there and when he came back and he just showed me this, he said, see, I don't know what enlightenment he got from there. I don't know what I did not get, but <laughs> here he is with this amazing tool, which just my mind. I was like, man, that's so awesome. We should continue doing it. So now we are here presenting it. Yeah, but before that, we ask one question. Do we need one more tool to create trees? Well, we have these many, and I cannot put more in this list. But you say that I have tried most of them, like except the Cinema 4D one, like I have never used it. But the rest of them I have used. But do we? But I would say the sh mm, long question is yes. The right? long answer will be yes. Yeah, we need it for two reasons. One. But the biggest thing, like all the good tools, basically, I'm um, used for uh, speed tree, which I use the most. And there are other I use, but which are not up to the mark of creating the trees and with the control. And there is Grove 3D, which is really good. You should check it out. So I will talk about these two tools because I use them, I use those the most, right? So speed tree, which will be like 90%, I would say. So the main issue is like these all tools do not allow you to sell the assets back. You can use them in your renders, you can use them in your game, but you cannot resell them. So that was our biggest problem because we want to resell in our library on Blender Kit, right? So we wanted something custom, which we can control, which have power. So we wanted to build something like that. 
there is surely like if you see uh, there is a recent talk on Houdini called Solving Plants. So they have, uh, if you say Natura and Flora, you check it out, that they are also had similar issues, right? So they are also developing something in the Houdini, but we are doing it in Blender. So that's the second one. The same reason was we didn't want to include any other third party software. We wanted to do it within Blender. So we don't go to it. For Speed Tree, for example, so we can do go there and we clean it up and we're going to change it enough and then it's our own asset. But still, it's a lot of work. And we want to control it and procedural, we want to make changes to it later on. So we started when Geometry Node came and we felt like we have all the control we can get from it. Right. So before even go more too technical, I will... So this was basically the journey how we ended up doing uh, this thing together and we want to build. But before jumping into the technical stuff, which Willem will speak about, and if you start to sleep with it, <laughs> that, just do this, okay? Okay, I will come in and do some jokes and you all laugh and just for my sake, okay, laugh, okay? So <laughs> then, then we'll continue. But yeah, so that's how we reach here. But, but mostly, if we say the basics in our uh, geometry nodes and how we do normally things procedurally, it's basically you have points and splines, right? You get some points and then you create splines on it, right? And then create meshes from the spline. That's all traditional way, which is still true to this point, like which I check all the 3D tools, every uh, tool use the same methodologies. But how they create those point and spline is the question. Like that's different for everybody, how they do it. But in the bare bone, that's how they create the mesh, create the tree and how they control it, how the system works, is that's their mind is, basically. So, yeah, here is basically, like if you uh, seen, you might have seen a lot more examples about these all things separately in separate, separate tools, right? You can create points and supply, and you can distribute to create, you might have seen the landscape and forest, like which distribute the trees, and then per instance based changes in the, those plants, in the scale or rotation, or maybe twist and stuff like that. So that everything is possible with the geometry nodes. But the main question was how we, you know, club it together in there, right? So, yeah, so we almost talked about the initial concept. Like that's what we wanted to have something which worked for us and work for uh, our creating library, right? And which we eventually ship out and so other people can also create something awesome. Right? So that was there. And, and the thoughts and uh, thoughts were there. Like you can always think, oh, like we want to make this simulator or we want to make this tree builder, which just give you the trees. But it's not as easy as sound. Like for me, like I have basic knowledge of geometry and, he, uh, and he knows more. It's, we always have this clash between this thought like, oh no, we want, it to be this way, but the geometry node says, no, you cannot do it, or it is like very like this. You have to do, hold your ear like this, but there's no straightforward way, which is, you know, make it more complicated than easy to understand. Right? So, but still we discussed like we common ground, like how we should, how we should proceed, how we should keep uh, developing this further on. And we build something that we're gonna show you next. And the challenges we're gonna talk about talk like all the challenges with after we have gone through all all the thing so so again so the in the end there are like with these three things we wanted to focus on on there so we have some procedural generation which is not fully procedural is simulation right so i will say a little bit but it's mostly simulation it's a simulation generation and we have parameters and attributes that we could uh, we achieved and it was real time simulation right uh, we have some example on that also like tree growing up and we'll show you how it works so yeah now to willem and show what also algorithms he used in there yeah um it sounds maybe a bit complex when Bajva talks about it, he's the guy who understands the trees and I will show you the notes and I hope everyone will understand what we do and you can also repeat it. How many of you do know what a vertex is? Nice. And how to extrude a vertex? 
Nice. So, you know, that's what we do. It's like simple. Actually, <laughs> in the end, it's just extruding vertices. So, first I will show a bit of what it does do. So, yeah, it grows trees. And it grows kind of different types of trees from the same geometry nodes. So, we have some common logic to uh, grow the trees. Uh, we can grow like different types of trees. We have um, kind of some geometry node setups for twigs and this kind of stuff. This is a bit wild, so what, that's why I will be showing mostly the simulation without the twigs, what we see uh, later. And uh, basically, we are able uh, to simulate uh, some things that happen during the life of a tree. Uh, this is obviously growth. It's splitting into branches, splitting of the branches into more branches, and uh, searching for light, which I think is interesting, that we can with geometry nodes simulate where there's shadow, where there is light. And so, for example, in this example, you can see the pine tries to grow a bit further away from the other tree. And we can also kill the trees or branches selectively by absence of light or by collision with obstacles or by setting up rules from the ground like when people like to go around the trees and go with their cars below the trees so they cut the branches so that's what happens to trees in their life so and we also try to make it general enough so it's useful also for plants and other types of growth. But uh, the focus was on trees mainly. So how do we do it? So this is the, these are the vertices with, with extrusion. This is the basics that we have a wire model where the tree grows. And that's what is simulated. In the loop, we only simulate this. And sometimes we use the mesh for some, let's say, collision detection or something. But uh, generally, most of it happens on the wireframe. So it's really simple at its core. And like making it the mesh is like a cherry on the cake. We make it afterwards. And this is like just simple curves. Or this is like a very little difference. And this is like voxel merge, just What's interesting, we can do UVs and transfer the UVs to the voxel merge mesh, also all in geometry nodes, which is amazing. Uh, Twigs are as instances, and then we can also place details like bars or like tree stumps and all these little uh, irregularities that happen on trees, like all the moss and this kind of stuff. And these are, again, just simple setups that we already, that you probably already known and seen have seen that can enrich the result. It's just uh, the good part is this can use the simulation data still. The simulation data is there, so we know, for example, uh, the age of the branch or whatever. So how do we do it? It's um, It can be all put into basically groups, node groups, is like, uh, I will try to kind of explain it from the ground up. You probably all know geometry nodes modifier, and you have the nodes, and you can group them. And we can see these groups as functions that happen after each other on the tree. So uh, it can be all put into one modifier, or the system can be used in more modifiers, which I did usually that, for example, the bark details come into another modifier. So that can be easily switched off and it's also easily controllable. This is how uh, the very most basic uh, setup uh, looks where we have some input into the modifier and output. And there is a simulation loop. This is what you can see. Uh, it's the pink area where all the simulation that we are going to talk uh, happens and only after that is uh, some node group that makes the mesh out of it. So this is a look inside of the simulation loop and this could look complicated uh, but uh, 
one thing to mention is this this is like a reuse of like five or six types of nodes in some variants and uh, this is linear you, you may see this is this is not a complicated network it's just like i take my mesh and i do something with it and then i do something in it so, so basically the user should be able to recreate this right uh, let's say at branching nodes like i want to set up branches and and this is also a bit uh, more complex tree that you can do and oh I, yes here you can uh, ah, I, I, I skipped to another yeah, sorry yeah, okay like like this okay here you can already see two um, this is four node groups but it's actually two types one is just for growing which you can imagine literally like extruding the vertex and the other one is for branching which is again extruding vertex but under different rules and um, after I present the system, I will show a live session where we can actually try to recreate like the very basics of this. Uh, the system has some rules, of course, for the angle of how how much it deviates from uh, how random it is, how how much the force that pulls it up against the gravity is, and an another forces that you can define that are in the system. And here is, for example, you can see uh, already that there are some names like from to, uh, and this is these are attribute names, the blue dots in the nodes. And for example, we can define a stem, and we can use the same uh, branching node for uh, the branches, but also for the roots. And then here you can see that there is like a root from root, so the roots can branch further, and that's simply what happens. And for example then the root can snap to ground you can have a collider defined and there is a node to for snapping and again it seems complex but we are just looking for closest mesh and moving vertex that is extruded to it because we are still working with this simple wireframe that's extruded then the, there are more nodes like increasing the age writing the age to to the tree is important and that's where I come to attributes. This talk will be quite a bit about attributes because um, that's like 19% of the system is like writing something onto the mesh and then reading from it, like in the terms of attributes. So because if we know, for example, if we can calculate a light that's falling on a branch, then we can use it later and you we can write the direction into which uh, from which the most light comes so we can use it for uh, tweaking where the tree grows and this kind of stuff so understanding of attributes is essential in geometry nodes can i ask you how many of you do know how to use attributes in blender geometry nodes yeah quite a lot so so this, these are examples of the for example that these are quite complex groups but uh, we can calculate the shadows and then we can prune the branches based on the shadows and so, so these are and some of them are really simple like pruning like if a branch is you know two, up to two meters from the ground and kill it and there is a difference between killing and removing a branch because as you know like uh, branches when they dry on the tree they don't fall off immediately they stay for some time so there are algorithms for killing and for uh, pruning or deleting and again it's just deleting vertices so how uh, do we use the attributes like so, so the system writes a lot of attributes everywhere for example let's say we can write an id of the branch so uh, it knows which branch is this uh, um, that it handles a separate branch separately uh, and it's on different levels. I think these are level one and the previous ones were level two IDs. This is for example, age of the branches. So you can see um, this, this can be used as always when the vertex gets extruded, uh, it gets written a zero into its age. And then every step, 
we increase the age of the tree by one. So the fresh vertices are young and, and the, the older ones get, you know, higher numbers. And then from that, we derive the thickness of the tree and, and the branches. It's quite uh, simple. Again, this is, for example, branch like from the, from the trunk. This is the shadow calculation I spoke about. You can also see in the simulation branches are removed dynamically. So, uh, this is the grow direction that is calculated from, from the light calculation. It seems a bit wild, but that's because it's vectors or x, y, z written to colors. Okay. Ah. Okay, so, so th this is two trees that grow beside each other without, uh, uh, without the light search algorithm influencing their growth. And the growth, uh, the difference is not so big. But uh, this is, as maybe you can see, this is a completely differently shaped crown of the tree uh, just by switching on the light simulation, right? Because th then the branches kind of tend to uh, go away from each other and the left smaller tree is more influenced, etc. So this is for, again, like this is an obstacle, like a house or whatever. And this is ignoring the obstacle completely. This is with a certain weight where, where we mix it, like the grow, uh, I'll grow, uh, grow step basically gets influenced by the light search algorithms so it grows beside the house and this is like even stronger influence where you can see it, the shape is completely influenced by the by the obstacle hmm. so this is the dying of the branches or killing and you can see like the they are uh, gradually being marked the lower ones or the ones more inside and then it takes a while before they fall apart or fall away yeah uh, so some some more examples about because it's simulation as we will see in the live part of the session uh, simulations are tricky. That's what Aman talked about. Uh, they are sometimes harder to control and they are quite easy to explore. This case is maybe not so extreme, but of course, like if you're working with it, you, you get like hundreds of them daily, <laughs> uh, where if you just uh, don't have ways to control how much uh, the recursive thing uh, happens, it can explode. Uh, which means like uh, like the you know you can imagine what happens if you take an edge and each time you split it in twice each step of your cycle in five rounds or ten rounds you have you can have millions of branches maybe okay. yeah this is one more example and <laughs> No, yeah, that's a work in progress, but I was really fascinated by those trees that can throw down roots from their branches, as Aman said, in India. So this is one of the experiments that is not completely finished, but uh, it's interesting that the same algorithms, like, you know, something is extruded, something gets snapped to something, and in the simulation loop, it can simulate different behaviors. Uh, this is also, uh, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, this, these are like different levels of the plants. I, I showed them already. Mm -hmm. And now we're getting to, to the explanation of how this works. Because I, I, until now I was talking about, uh, uh, you know, what it does and it, I didn't want it to, see, yeah. I, I, I want you to understand it because in a sense it's quite simple. So I will. Just before. Uh, 
So it's not a live session, I'm sorry. I was so afraid that I will screw up, so it's, it's pre-recorded, but I will tell you what I'm doing, right? So let, let's say we add a um, geometry nodes modifier, and we add with something called mesh line. This is just an easy way to add uh, vertices. And we will actually start with only one vertex. Not two, as you would expect, because I want to extrude already the first one. So I reduce it to one vertex, and then I add a extrude mesh operator. So, And I add a vector as an input to it uh, to tell it how much I want to extrude it. Right? So this way I should get uh, an edge. So far so good. It's, we, I have an edge. <laughs> now let's try to put this operation into a simulation loop. So I will add a simulation zone to the graph. And I will connect the simulation zone that the extrusion happens inside. Now I have something that looks like it's extruding the edge every step. It's not really true because it's extruding every vertex in the mesh every step. So there are now millions of vertices maybe. Uh, but uh, let's show you what's happening uh, by uh, maybe randomizing the motion a bit. Yeah, so I will just swap this uh, vector that I put there for a random value vector. Just create a vector, a random vector. And now you can see what is really happening. It's evil. Uh, like every vertex gets every step an extrusion. Wow. So we need to limit that. We need to tell somehow um, to these nodes what and where extrude. So we want to extrude only the end vertices, and this way we will get a growth, right? So, hmm. uh, for, for this, we have the selection, of course, of the geometry nodes, and we will start with uh, vertex neighbors which are a really great way to detect topology. If a vertex has zero vertex neighbors, then we know it's a solo vertex, right? That's in the beginning of this simulation. And if we have one neighbor, it means it's end vertex, because if it would have two neighbors, it's in the middle. So we just are uh, curious about the vertices that have only one or less neighbors, which is our initial vertex and then you know, every other that gets extruded. Now, when I try it, there are actually two stems growing. This is because I have two loose ends in the beginning of, uh, of this. It's one edge, right? So we will now change this to have only one growth from this um, by telling the simulation with attributes what is the, let's say, root side of this uh, seedling, I call it, and what is the growth side, where should the stem grow? Uh, because this, this is maybe um, in the original graph I've shown, there is first something called seedling, you know, and it just, that's this edge that uh, kind of has attributes added to it where we mark the top as the stem. So here I basically duplicate the extrude and move it before the simulation loop because I want to prepare this seedling before the simulation loop. And I will add mm, the store named attribute node. And I will take the top of the extrusion node as selection. Now the top is the stem, right? And I will do something, and I will change it to Boolean to, because it's just a yes, a yes or no attribute. It's not a float value like 0 0.5. It's yes, it's a stem for it. And now I duplicate it, and I will add a 
Boolean uh, logic uh, node called not, and which means like uh, it, I will negate the value and I will mark it as root. This is not something I will use in this example, but I just wanted to show you how you can split the work that is supposed to be done because then you can easily tell the node groups, hey, this is for the roots and don't touch the rest of the mesh. So now, now I have an edge and this is the stem vertex and this is the root vertex. Uh, ignore that it's so sideways, it's just random vectors, right? And now let's tell the node group how to uh, use the attribute just to grow the stem, not the root. Okay. So I will try to read the named attribute uh, by adding a node called named attribute and I will write into it to search for the stem and then I will pull out an end operator which means like if both conditions are true this will work. So if it's an end vertex without neighbors and it, it, if it's from the attribute that I mark as stem, it will grow. Now you can see I have grow, random growth of one, uh, one side of the edge and that's it. Yeah. So let's ignore that this can have a lot of uh, fancy values about where you want the stem to grow, how much it keeps, memory of where it did grow, its direction, etc. And let's mark this as one group because it's in principle this growth node as, as I described, yeah? So I can take the nodes and go to node and group them. And I will name it grow because it grows. And, and let's just try for, to show the principle how could we change this into a branching node because the principle be behind is really simple and maybe you would already guess how to do it. At least those of you who are learning now something, I expect like a lot of you know, this, these are basics, but we wanted to, to really from the ground up try to explain what's happening. So let's change the condition, right? We, if we want to branch, let's branch from the ones that have two neighbors. So, so I have like vertices and somewhere from the side grows something, just ignoring now the biological uh, principles behind it, but uh, this is just an example. So now I can uh, change the condition of neighbors. And I was checking if I have less then or equal to one and now I have equal to two. So this way I will also ensure from one vertex there will not be more branches. There will be maximum one branch from one vertex. And now if I do it, uh, things go crazy again uh, because uh, it's, there is 100% probability that this will happen on all the vertices that, that don't have any branch. So I will pick the um, random value node Mm. Yeah, he, here I made in this live talk a little mistake, so I'm adding it again. <laughs> because I want just a Boolean random value. Uh, and I re didn't realize I could switch the node to Boolean. And I set the probability of it to happen to 0 0.042, so this is like 2% probability, which means one in 50 vertices will get a branching every step, which can still be a bit crazy. And of course, then if you want to build up a more complex simulation, you, you build the comp conditions more, more complexly. And now let's see, okay, nothing, nothing. Mm -hmm. So it was too low, the probability, let's try this. Uh, okay, something is happening, it's branching. Yeah. And again, there is no limit to how many uh, branch children can we have, which is wrong, uh, and we could limit it. Uh, and we are doing it in our system, but uh, for now, um, let's call this finished for this uh, little live session. And 
Yeah. This recording also shows how to do the meshing, uh, but I think I would, um, because, because of time and maybe the possibility for questions, I will now end this part of the session and I will let Adam, uh, Aman talk further. Yeah? Okay. So thank you. Easy, eh? <laughs> Easy, eh? <laughs> so, raise your hand how many people uh, are artists? So, you guys feel me. Thank you. <laughs> so, so, I don't know how much you guys got. Like, I uh, hope <laughs> everybody got how much you guys clapped. You're so humble. Thank you. <laughs> so, so uh, we will bitch about it later on how much uh, we pull each other's hair off with all this. Uh, technically, we can't, but <laughs> metaphorically, <laughs> just imagine. <laughs> so that's like two perspectives basically going head in hand. Just before this, uh, I just wanted to, you know, give a little bit like this uh, thought process what I have in the head and what he built in there. So what I have in the head is like I want more control over all the things like every trunk what i want it to be where the roots should go how it should go it technically have it have all the nodes and you can control them but it's kind of little complicated like because there are not all the parameters are exposed in there so if we expose all the parameters there will be like this long nodes everywhere and then it's going to scare so many people but if you open it up and change something, that's also like you have to know basics of geometry nodes. But if you know the basics, you will be, you know, better off. You can ch make changes, you can, you know, do it. So that was the one. What I wanted is, so I'll give a little bit about, L how many people know about L system? Awesome. So I will tell a little bit. So what L system is, is just like bunch of parameters or uh, rules which follow on each step. Basically, you say, okay, this is one line which will go and it's split three, right? And then each step, each line will split three. So then you will get this pattern and it look like tree. I wish I added the sum in there, but technically we are having something similar. Each step we are following these rules which are going, but it's more organic, more uh, chaotic and more controllable also. So it gives you more organic feel, uh, but you can do that with L system also, which all the previous uh, you know, uh, tools and many other also follow the same principles, right? So it started with that, but then uh, other thing I wanted, all the art stuff. The art stuff is not there yet, right? So what, we, what I wanted was to not just the control, the how I use my textures, my models, my scans with it. And we have some word, but it's still, uh, I personally have to learn how to fully, I need his help so many times. So that's why I said it's complicated in there to implement just that. Like I said like, okay, I have this scan. Okay, I have this type of texture. Okay, I want to, you know, map, UV map. So we have, we lacking those options. But still we build something and just this, these are slides just to, you know, test the speed of it. So basically the first one will be the wires. And second one is the spline mesh. Basically, spline turned into uh, tubes and with chaotic leaves. Right? Ignore the leaves because those are calculated each step. So they just, you know, randomly pop up. And then there is voxel mesh. Right? You can see voxel mesh takes a lot of time. This is just a single tree. Right? So, so imagine. Uh, and the next one is just the branches. So here are just the branches. So, so the low mesh is like I have turned the spline to three-sided spline. So this is the low low mesh. It's the same spline mesh, but with the three sides and the lesser on there. But that have eight and six on the trunk and branches respectively. And the last one is vo uh, voxel mesh. You will see there's nothing happening right now. You will see that it's, it's just same from a time. But it's happening. You're just converting it to the voxel mesh and the tiny branches are you know not getting calculated. Because the voxel size is, I think, 0 0.01 uh, meter, I think. So the size of the voxel. So it's heavy plus it eat off the branches. So I like the 
this method better because I'm in games, I want optimized thing. So this is still, uh, I like, but there's still a lot of thing which uh, I need in that, right, personally. So challenges, right? So again, as I said, as an artist, you need the tool to work for your workflows and your thing. And you might have, you seen everything in each slide, you seen a single step plant, basically, uh, which is like uh, leafy plants, basically, you can say, which just grow out of the soil. Maybe they have a seed, they just grow out, the leaves pops out. So those are like single step plants. But then there are second step, which like the stem and then leaves pops up and then the three step, then you get into plant zone and tree zone with multiple steps, right? So we already have it, but it's not single joined right now, right? The all are nodes, like if you want three step, different nodes, single step, different nodes, for a tree, different nodes, this tree, different nodes. So to create single thing, we need a streamline, you know, uh, the nodes, though which we can, which works. Again, like this is way, way more complicated than I, like if you guys get it, but for me, it feels so complicated to, you know, adding multiple things, you have to make more node groups and then, you know, increase the graphs and node groups and node groups everywhere, so, you know. So, so, yeah, so then the, the second thing in the art is like, you know, the, if you might see in the previous one, if I run it again. So you see these branches, they are not connecting to the trunk really well, right? And we are missing the root uh, of flare of the tree. There are like multiple art side of things which still we have to figure out in there. And uh, that, you know, and, and we, in the initial, we fixed it. We initially the branches direction were, we were also figuring out, like they were going very chaotically. We wanted it to go in the direction of, you know, the branch. So they pop out in the angle of the same branch. So, but yeah, we, we got that and yeah, optimization. So optimization is the, you know, biggest thing right now. So like we, we have the parameters, but they are inside the node groups. We can expose them easily, right? So how many you want in the length and how many you want in the sides. I said that's easy to expose, but imagine the multiple steps, we have to streamline it. Like it's available there. So if we can do it and, and it can also work with the LODs. Like if it's a distance, it automatically does it. Right. So, oh, so that also is a possibility. And then again, in the end, we, I asked like the, when I first time he showed me the tree, I was like, so awesome. I felt like, dude, this is so awesome. We can create anything. But then I saw the node group. I was like, dude, what is this? What is this? <laughs> How am I supposed to use this? So he sat me multiple times to show off like, okay, this node do this and open it up. And uh, you guys are not slept yet, but I slept <laughs> multiple times, really good sleep. I was like, man, you have to show me every night. I have a good night's sleep. <laughs> so, but uh, in the end, uh, when I used it, uh, I see the potential in that. So he still, we, we are not working that much on it, but we are planning to work in it more often, more regularly to fix these things. Right. So these are a uh, few, few plan. We want to make it again, more parametric, like more values are there, more streamlined, right? More optimized geometry. And maybe, maybe <laughs> give it to the public, right? So they create something. We don't want to give it now because it create ugly trees and I personally don't want to see ugly trees popping up in blender kit library or anywhere on the internet. No, we don't want to spend, we are not AI. We are people, we are artists. We make good stuff, right? So yeah, so that's our plan. So once it's ready, uh, we will, uh, you know, put it on blender, uh, blender kit. Yeah, so watch over it and we share it to limited amount of people to receive feedback. So, and they create uh, content with it, so we improve it more. So that's the plan for the public access. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh <laughs>